Alrighty guys, so in today's video, we're gonna be back testing the ICT macros. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the New York AM session macros, but all the concepts here will apply to other sessions. Let's get straight into it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna mark out these key time frames here. This one is 9.50 in the morning. So you wanna get some vertical lines up just to separate it. And this is 10.10 10 in the morning. So if you've seen some of my previous videos of macros, Macros are key time periods where the market should do something important, right? So it's a good way to frame a trade or a good way to anticipate that the market might do something if you're unsure of what the market is currently doing, right? So for example, let's have a look here, right? Before this macro, you know, from 9.30 open, price is just selling down, selling down, selling down. So at this point here, guys, you might be thinking, okay, well, when are we gonna have a reversal? You know, you look on the side here, you can see we've already taken out this liquidity from a previous day. You're like, when are we gonna have a reversal? That's when you come into the macros and you see what the macro actually does and then how the macro develops. So during this macro, you've got a rate of liquidity here. You've got your market structure shift. Right, that's your market structure shift. I'm gonna get that on the top of price action here. And then how do you enter? Well, you could enter from a bullish gap, depending on how confident you are or how much conviction you have you could have entered from this inversion fair value gap as well. So we inverse this bearish gap, we close above. That could have been one entry. Maybe that's with one contract when price returns to this bullish gap, maybe that's a second. And you just got to have a clear draw on liquidity. So this high, this high, this high, this high, they're all liquidity points that can be taken out. And what I like to see here, guys, is this like accumulation here, you know, an accumulation before an expansion. So Essentially, the way you could use this first macro just through back testing this, say you entered from this bullish gap, stop loss goes below the inversion fair value gap, and you can target what you need to. If a one to two is what you're after, you get that completely. So you can see that's how you can use that first macro to then execute a trade. The second macro, let's have a bit of a look what happens here, right? The second macro, we raid this liquidity point, right? So you raid that liquidity point. We tap into this imbalance here, which you can see. So that's your second macro. And then have a bit of a look at price action. So you've got, after rating liquidity, this bullish gap gets disrespected. Have a look at that. That becomes an inversion fair value gap right here. So essentially, you could execute straight away off the inversion because ultimately, we've actually generated now more liquidity on the sell side here. So you could execute from that if you'd like. If not, if not, then potentially you can use one of these inversion fair value gaps, this big bullish gap here. Look at how price trades in this. Look at this. We trade once, twice, three times, and all we're doing, we're trading back into this inversion that I've marked out in orange, and also this green candle here. Right, That green candle there is your order block. So we're trading into an order block and an inversion fair value gap, plus we still have this liquidity that can be for the taking, Right, all this liquidity here. So. Essentially, if you wanted to execute off this kind of macro here, you could go short. If you went short here, well, obviously your stop would have to go above this high. It should be protected as it's taken out liquidity. If you went short here somewhere, then I would probably put my stop loss above this candle. Right? That technically is a swing high, plus there's another order block here. Technically a little breaker there, so that's three PD rays it's above. And then what do you target? We target these lows, right? Maybe a partial, whatever you want to do. But ultimately, you can see we end up taking out this point of liquidity, right? This point of liquidity. Now, notice we take out this point of liquidity. Now we head into the lunch hour. The lunch hour, a lot of time, ICT mentions don't trade because it can be a bit weird and wacky. Sometimes it's nice, but other times it can be a bit strange. So the lunch hour, have a look. That's from 12 to 1 o'clock. The lunch hour does this price action, as we can see. And then let's map out the next macro just so I can show you this. The next macro here, if you have a look, is from 12.50 to 1.10. That's like the ending the ending lunch macro. So have a bit of a look here. That's 12.50 and then 1.10. Notice how during lunchtime, we generate this low, which is a lunchtime low. We take out that low during the macro. So you're looking, you're looking for these price signatures, right? You're looking for these price signatures to actually be able to execute a high probability trade. So you rate that liquidity. And then what do we have here, right? Little, little breaker block potentially there that you might see. But ultimately, there's this bullish gap and price uses this to move higher. Do we tap into it? Maybe, maybe just by a tick here.
but ultimately we have that market structure shift. We also have an inversion fair value gap here created. This bearish gap becomes inversed, right? So you could enter from the inversion and do something similar to this, right? So you entered here somewhere, stop loss below these candles, TPs where you got plenty of TPs, right? So you can see how macros kind of behave. Sometimes, right, they won't give you anything. So what you're kind of looking for is you're looking for the highest probability macros. What makes the highest probability? Well, if it's just taking out liquidity and there's a clear liquidity target to actually match on the opposing liquidity side. So that there is like your New York kind of session on that particular day. Let's go back. Let's go back and have a little bit of a look. Here's the second day. So this is Thursday and we'll do the same kind of thing here. We'll go for 950 roughly, which is that candle, and we'll also go for 1010. Now you tell me, do you see an opportunity, any opportunity here to go long? You may. We raid liquidity, we have a shift in structure, we have an inversion fair value gap right here with this candle closure above. We trade back down, tap just maybe missed it, but we tap back into this bullish gap here. That's your opportunity to go long. Right, so you go long from here, stop loss below the inversion fair value gap or below this order block. And you may get one partial. You don't really get a one to two here, but you can see how that kind of looks there. But let's have a look at the next macro. So the next macro is from 10.50 up until 11.10. So let's go right here. 10.50 to 11.10. Is there anything there that I really like? Not really, in my opinion, right? Not really. Yes. You know, I suppose that macro came up and it returned into this imbalance here, right? It tapped into that order block. But for me, that macro in particular does nothing for me. So this would have been your execution. How do you navigate a market like this, guys? How do you navigate a market like this? Well, you take partials, right? Especially when you've had a massive sell-off like this. And have a look, there's all these bearish gaps here. So if you're taking a long position from here, you've got to be mindful of that We've already initiated bearish order flow. So if you're looking for longs, it may be a short scalp. Once you reach this swing high here, say you use this macro and see what price is in the macro and then you execute just after or either during the macro, or whatever you see. There's also inversion fair value gaps down here too, guys. This inversion, this inversion opportunities to go long, right? So depending on your, your structure, you may have been able to execute a trade down here. If not, it would have been would have been partials there. So you can see how that kind of looks there. Leading into, I guess, that end of end of lunch hour macro, you can see 1250 is here, 110 is there. So macros do a couple of things, guys. They either give you an entry, they either raid liquidity, or they run towards liquidity. So in this case, we're running towards liquidity. What liquidity? This sell side liquidity right here, right? So what you're trying to do, I'm not saying that macros always work out and that there's always going to be an entry. I'm just saying that these macros can offer high probability reversals or high probability trades because we expect or anticipate that they're going to run towards something. That's how we kind of anticipate it. So you're looking at price here, 250, right? All the way to 310. Have a look at that. 250 roughly around here, 310 is roughly down here. What does that macro do? It runs to liquidity, which is this sell side. So if you can frame a trade in that, then even better, right? Even better. So that there was Thursday's price action. Let's go back to Wednesday's price action. And there were a few red folder news events, right? There were red, uh, red folder news events on this week. So that also impacts price action, guys. But have a bit of a look. Let's map this out. So let's go from 950, which is right here, and get rid of that. I'll get something different up actually. Vertical line. So let's go 950. And let's go all the way until 1010, which is here. So what happens in this macro? We come down, we accumulate, we come down, we raid liquidity. We can zoom out too. All right, nothing close by apart from this. And this is a previous day liquidity. So we come down, we raid previous day liquidity, we tap into an imbalance, and that happens during the macro. So what do we do? Look for potential reversals. We need to have clear targets. So my clear target would be this level of buy side. And then the next point would be to see how we react from this candle, which is an order block, right? So there'd be two points they'd be looking to take partials at. So if you're looking at this now, 
you could enter based on your conviction straight away off this bullish fair value gap, right? If not, right, you can wait until we inverse this bearish gap right here. See that? We inverse it with this big candle. We come close to this high, but we don't take it out and then we retrace back down. So when we retrace back down, this is where the optimal trade entry can come in handy, guys, because you're like, okay, well, where should I take a buy position from? Should I buy from this fair value gap or should I wait until it retraces? This is where, you know, I'd prefer to grab the Fibonacci, go from this low to this high, just like that, and then look for entries below equilibrium. So for example then, you could take a long position from here as price returns, just like that. Where's your stop loss go? You could go below this low if you wanted to, that's quite a wide stop loss. I'd probably go below these bodies. If you wanted to be a bit more risky, below this wick, of the candle that created the inversion fair value gap. But let's assume you did this, which is a bit less risky. Do you get your one to two? Yes. Do you at least get one partial? Yes. So you should at least get one partial before you may get stopped out of break even in this case, right? And you can see what happens here, guys. Price comes back up. We tap into this little fair value gap here. Look at that. We tap into that SIBI and we tap into that order block and that's the point of reversal. Eventually, right? we do end up taking out some more liquidity, but it's not until later on. So that there is the first macro. The second macro here, let's have a bit of a look. So the second macro is 10.50, which is here, until 11.10. Does that do anything important for me? Not really, guys, not really. Nothing really there that I'd like to execute on. Right, nothing really there that I'd like to execute on. There is this, right? And this is outside of the macro as well. You do have this inversion fair value gap, but I don't like how the body's closed above. So sometimes the macros, you look at it and you go, nah, there's nothing really here that I like. So you just move on to the next macro and you let the price do its thing. So again, here's another macro from 11.50 to 12.10. And we could tape read these macros for the rest of the session. But generally speaking, what you wanna see is you wanna see nice price movement. This is not nice price movement. That's all accumulation, right? Yes, eventually you expect it to get taken out, trend on liquidity, but is there anything here for me to capitalize on? No. Is there anything here for me to capitalize on? Probably not, right? The only thing that I can kind of see potentially, which is outside of a macro, is this inversion fair value gap after raiding liquidity, but look how choppy the market is. So this probably would have been a nice trade and that would have yielded what you needed to and that would have relied on the macro to actually execute the trade in. So that there was Wednesday's price action, Wednesday's price action. Let's go back now to Tuesday's price action. Red fold and news event here, you can kind of see how the price delivers there. So have a little bit of a look. You can see that 8.30 news candle. So have a look, right? We raid that news candle. Where's the macro, right? The macro is from 9.50 to 10.10. So there's a range of ways you can use macros, guys. You can enter during the macro, you can enter before the macro, anticipating that it's gonna run, or you can wait for the macro to raid liquidity and then enter after. It just depends what the market's showing. So in this case, we rated important liquidity before the macro. So how you could execute using this macro would be, okay, let me look for long opportunities, maybe inversion, fair value gaps, etc., that I could take advantage of to then push price higher for this draw liquidity, these two highs here, relative equal highs, right? You can see that, and you can see how we trade through that. So, quite interesting. That's another macro where this might have been, might have been CPI or something like that this week. Big news event. The next macro, have a look. Ten fifty to eleven ten. Does that do much for me? No. Look how choppy that is in a very very small range. Very very small range. Right, so for me, that's not really worthwhile um, taking advantage of. Next macro, have a bit of a look, 11.50. And this is why you kind of got to watch the market and have an idea of where you want price to go. So 11.50 to 12.10. This now has price action that I'm willing to participate in potentially because we've rated liquidity. It's a really lovely delivery here. You've rated liquidity. You've had a bullish gap, right? That's been disrespected. So you've got an inversion fair value gap right here, right? Which is interesting. So you've got one inversion fair value gap. 
You've also got a bearish fair value gap here, which you can see I marked that in red. And then we sell off, then we retrace back into this CV here. So that there is your opportunity then to go short during this macro. Why? Because there's all this imbalance down here. And you know the market probably wants to trade from discount back into premium. So really nice delivery of price action there. There's another macro here from 1250 to 110. And I'll just map that out just so you can see. So this is the 1250 to 110 macro. 1250, 110. Now, really with this, what would have been nice, if we rated that swing low, it would have been nicer. It would have been nicer. You can see we left these equal lows and then remember, we came back and actually tagged those. We tagged those on Thursday here, I think it was, or Wednesday. So you can see macro sometimes offer reverse opportunities or entries. Reverse opportunity here, reverse opportunity here, reverse opportunity here, and in this case, entries. Once price is like this, then for me, the macros don't mean much, right? They don't mean much because it's too choppy. Price action is too choppy. So that there's Wednesday's price action, I believe, or Tuesday, sorry. And now let's have a look at Monday. Very, very choppy price action. Have a bit of a look at this. Very seek and destroy conditions. Um, so let's have a bit of a look. Let's map this out from 950. Let's have a look. So 950 is roughly here. And then we've got 1010, which is roughly about here. Mind you, have a look what happens during this macro. We do raid liquidity. We do find some kind of support, if you want to call it that. And essentially, from that macro onwards, then we start to reverse. So they're kind of like pivot points. They're kind of like pivot points. Do you execute in this macro? Is there anything really to execute from? Not really. But seeing that it's rate of liquidity, then potentially after the macro, there's your market structure shift, right? You've got a fair value gap here that you could enter from. And again, how do you phrase this? Grab your fib from this low to this high and see what rests below equilibrium. This fair value gap, place a limit order at equilibrium or just below. Stop loss below this candle as it's an order block, right? Take profit, that could be one partial. This could be another partial, whatever you want to, or you could just hold for a clear one to two. And that's how you could execute using the macro, but after the macro. So let the macro rate liquidity, see what price action does, and then execute after that macro. So here's the next one. So 1050 is here. We'll draw this out. Get rid of that for a sec. So we've got 1050 is here. And then we've got 1110, which is right here. So during this macro, what do we do? Yes, we raid liquidity. And have a look at this, guys. Have a look at this. So this bullish gap gets broken to the downside. That becomes an inversion fair value gap. So potentially, as soon as this candle closes, that could have been your entry during this macro. Right? Stop loss above this high or above these bodies or above this inversion fair value gap candle. It all depends on your risk management, guys, and what you want to do. So it's personally up to you how you do it. But you should still be able to yield like a one to two. That should still be possible. And if not, hopefully, hopefully you're taking partials here because that's the next level of sell site, right? That's the next level of sell site. So you can just see how the price moves. It moves up, then it moves back down, then it moves up, then it moves back down. And then afterwards, well, this is quite messy, right? Eventually we start to move up, but that's way later on in the session leading into the next day. So this is more looking at using the macros as pivotal points. And the best way to kind of end this video, guys, is to say that the macros are the be all and end all. But if you see a setup during the macro, if you're anticipating that liquidity will be taken, right? Enter before the macro. And if the macro takes out liquidity and there's opposing liquidity target, then maybe you can execute outside of the macro. It just gives you a time frame to focus on and an extra confluence and have greater confidence in the trades you're taking rather than just blindly taking trades at random times. So technically this macro still is in silver bullet and part of this macro is as well. So it gives the market a bit of leeway. It accounts for potential due to swings from 9.30 to 10. It allows you to have those high probability trades as extra confluences. So hopefully you like that video. If you've got any questions, guys, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And until next time, I'll talk to you then.